Hello, I'm Mike. This is Will. We are the Tabletop Donkeys. Hello. And we bring you issue 64 of Warhammer 40,000 Conquest today. And this issue, we've got a, a, another pot of Astro Granite Texture Paint. Before we head into the issue, as always, if you want to skip straight to the battle reports in this issue, uh, there'll be time codes in the description. We're heading into the issue now. First up, we have a sort of soul layout of all the planets in the soul system, as well as where it is relative to several other systems. And there's a few interesting things here, like you see Mars as a forge world. Um, Deimos is now orbiting Titan, or Saturn apparently, because it was towed then. It is also a forge world. And you've got some more backstory on some of the specific planets, like uh, Terra. You can see the Emperor's Palace is in the Himalayas. Uh, Mars is the major forge world. Titan is the main base for the Grey Knights, and that sort of thing. There's a more history of the forces of chaos. This is at the end of the 41st millennium, such as the fall of Cadia, uh, the rebirth of Rebute Gilliman, that sort of thing. And here we have some background on the Tyranids, a race of gribbly aliens. Uh, if you like the film Alien or uh, the films of Starship Troopers, these are the army for you. And they come from beyond the galactic rim and sort of devour everything before them. And they are controlled, they have a sort of hive mind or they use synapse creatures to control lesser ones. And you've got a showcase of some Tyranid models here fighting against space marines. Also some background here on drop pods. There's uh, yet another space marine vehicle they use for a rapid insertion. If you've ever played the game's Door of War, you can certainly make use of drop pods in that. And again, some examples here and some examples of some famous assaults. So more history of the Blood Angels going on about a Tyranid invasion of their homeworld Baal. And we do have a painting guide in this issue, unlike the last one, where we're going doing layered highlights. So using Thousand Suns Blue and the Temple Suns Blue, essentially just do a thicker highlight of the dark colour, and then a thin highlight of the lighter colour on top, just in the extreme edges. And it's going over here with some of the black details that have been missed. And some of the models like the Champion's Sword, the Black Hauler's Horns, Flies, and the little glass components generally. And a little bit for the few Space Marine bits as well. Well, that's it for the issue itself, and we actually have several missions in this issue. We'll see how they work now. Before we get on to our mission, there's just a quick tutorial about using custom mat setups, which, well, if you want to make your own battles, you can set up the mats how you want, and uh, it talks about arranging the mats and rolling off to decide who places which map where, and then it also mentions Tutorial 21, which is all about setting up terrain, which is way back from the cargo deck. Here's some examples, so you could set them up all end to end if you wanted a really sort of slightly strange battle, and it does point out that that would be good for fast moving units or long range shooting. And then it even mentions having maps at odd angles like this, so there's one sort of different uh, orientation to the other ones. And, and uh, it actually even has a little note about considering game balance, depending on the kind of size and shape of board you're using. And down here there's also a suggestion of how many mats to use depending on the size of the armies you're using. And uh, in a video we did just recently we used this guide for playing a game with the stuff from Dark Imperium on these mats. So you can check that out if you like. But then on to our mission and our little fiction here is destroy the batteries. So well, we've got a map here of Ironfall, that city we encountered a couple of issues ago. And there's a lot of refugees fleeing to it and apparently the Space Marines have had to abandon the city perimeter which has allowed the Death Guard to come in and capture some anti-aircraft batteries. And they're using these to shoot down shuttles that are trying to evacuate the civilians. So not ideal. And then the map you'll see has four spaces on it. For, and this is rather like some we've had in the past where you can play the game multiple times. And actually that's the point of this. So I'll come back to this map in a moment. The mission Silence the Guns, we play it four times, and then this map here represents a single battle mat with an anti-aircraft battery in the middle, which they give us a piece of printed terrain for. That looks like this, and you're supposed to cut around the dotted line here, around the outside, and then the bit in the middle is, I think it's supposed to be a Vengeance Weapon Battery, which is a piece of terrain that used to be sold, it isn't anymore. But Mike didn't really fancy cutting up his magazine, which is understandable, so we actually made a custom terrain piece, which we'll show you in a minute, show you on the map once it's set up. But actually, as you can see on the map, it's only the central hexagonal bit that's actually relevant, the uh, surround is not actually important. Then the, the way the mission itself works is you can see we've got the anti-air battery in the middle, and around the outside are four power relays, which are the uh, using the objective markers that we got in issue 61. We have to roll off to decide which battle mat to use, and then set it up on the blank side, and then we get to set the terrain up following the tutorial from issue, uh, issue 20, I think it was. Then the Death Guard deploys two units from this list over here. So there are eight units, so four games, there's two units per game. And the Space Marines have the first turn, and they have to select one of these four units here to try and complete the mission with. So it's just 2v1 units for the four small games, basically. 
And uh, for both sides, I should point out as well, you can only use each unit once, so... The Space Marines have to destroy two of the power relays that are around the thing, and you and they're destroyed if the Space Marine if a Space Marine model touches the power relay, essentially. The Death Guard win if the Space Marines fail to destroy two of the power relays in any game, and there's actually it's six battle rounds for each game, so actually longer than we've been accustomed to. And another thing to point out is that it doesn't me make any mention of how many command points each side has in this, so presumably they intend for nobody to have any command points, so that's what we're going to assume anyway. And then back to the map again, so you can see we'll mark the victories on here, and I suppose the overall victor of this episode will be the one who wins the most games, or well, I guess it could be a draw. And as we've done previously, we've photocopied this page rather than writing on the magazine. And there's this little cameo here from the Silver Templars as well, they're holding a refugee processing zone. And two other chapters that, as far as I know, don't have it not called anywhere else. There's the Solar Suns and the Storm Angels, so... So now we'll get into the first of our games. The first thing we have to do is roll off for which map we're going to use, and then we will check. then we'll show you the terrain setup, and then Death Guard deployment and Space Marine unit, and get on with the game. So rolling to see who decides which battle map we're going to use. I've rolled a six. I got one. I'll decide, and then we'll show you which my choice in a second. So as you can see, I've chosen the city map to play our first game on, and this is the bespoke terrain piece that Mike has come up with. So this is a, well, it's a bunker, and uh, with a Hydra anti-aircraft turret on top of it. It's the same, exactly the same footprint as the hexagonal thing that is actually the important part of the terrain piece. It just doesn't have all the sort of grating around the outside. And in the game, you just can't move over it or see through it or anything like that. So it is just a box, really, but much prettier than a printed terrain piece. Now we need to roll off to see who gets to piece of place, place a piece of terrain first. I've got a six. I've got a six. Again. Six. You want to get all your sixes out of the way first. Five. Yeah. So you get to pick, you get first pick. So I've picked a set of riser pattern ruins, I've set them up here. So, I mean, it doesn't actually explain what to do about area terrain, since it's not denoted already in the map rules, but, well, because I've put these here, we'll say this bit is a bit of area terrain, this brown bit here. Uh, but that's not all. We've got a piece I randomly put over there, and don't forget the hatch, the most important bit. So as Mike's pick, you pick the battlefield accessories, you put a tank trap here in the road, and we create right in the corner where I can't use them. And there's a tank trap over here, and barrels over here. I chose a second set of riser ruins, so I put one bit here, so I guess this section here will end up being area terrain. And then over here we've got some bits, another bit of area terrain over there, a little bit of wall over there. And last time we get the other hatch, it's going over here. And then the last available selection was the pipes, or the, the thermic pipe and the cosuits, so there's one over here, a little control panel thingy in there. And a very nice arrangement here, linking off the two pipes and the wall over there. And then I had to pick two units and deploy them, and I've chosen a unit of Plague Marines, and both units of Plague Marines I've got um, the champion, well basically they're the easy to build ones, so I've got a Blight Launcher and a champion, Power Pest and Plasma Gun, and I've one for a unit of ten Pox Walkers. And I've deployed them right behind the objectives, because that, the Space Marines have to touch the objectives in order to destroy them, and they can't do that without getting within an inch of, the, of my units by placing them like this. And the Space Marines get to pick their unit to use, and you've gone for the Scouts. Yes, uh, try and get them out of the way early. Uh, and I'm going to give them shotguns as well, because we're probably going to be moving. And uh, it doesn't say they can't use concealed positions, so you've used it to gain an extra, a whole extra inch. Yeah, that's, it has to be nine inches away from the enemy's deployment zone, so it can just about fit on the board. Yeah, but the Space Marines get to go first, so we'll be on to Space Marine. well, Game 1, Space Marines, turn 1. Yep, so all well, my movement is, uh, these the scouts are going to move up, these two can move their full six, and the others have to daisy chain back to the Heavy Bolter Man, so he doesn't have to move. Fortunately, so we're straight into the shooting phase. Unfortunately, I don't have help, command points and no hellfire shells, because that'd be really handy in this. So we're just going to put all our shots into the, the plague marines. So I'll start with the heavy bolter. He didn't move, so we've got three shots hitting on threes, rolling ones. That's three hits, wounding on fours. Uh, two wounds. Uh, four plus armor. Oh, right. yeah, okay. I can roll high as well. Then we've got one shotgun that isn't within six, so he's hitting on threes, rolling ones. <laughs> Three shotguns that are within six, they get plus from strength, hitting on threes, rolling ones. They all hit. Wounding on fours. Three wounds. These are no AP though, so three plus. Uh, it's failed one, and it'll be one damage, so disgustingly resilient is a six. There we go. And then the scouts will declare a charge on those plague marines. Bolt gun man will throw a blight grenade, because yep. it might end up, you know, it's a number of shots really that's important. Oh, yep. six. Long. Hitting on sixes. Two. Uh, wounding on fives. Oh, and then we've got a blight launcher on sixes. Nope. Yeah, and a plasma point. gun. We won't supercharge it. Point. No. All right. And then our charge distance. We eight. So they finish their charge like this. Yep. And then we'll touch the objective. 
So that one is gone. So this one is destroyed. So we'll pile in. Yeah, just to make sure none of the plague can move. We'll go like that. Because provided they don't wipe you out, which... You might be able to fall back. You might, yeah, if you fall back in your next turn, you might be able to touch one of the other objectives. So, yeah. Six attacks from the scouts, hitting on threes. Five hits, moving on fives. Not a one. And then attacks back. Uh, we've got the... Well, we'll do the champion first. So two attacks it on fours. It doesn't matter. So there's one hit from a power fist. Wins on two. Yeah, yeah. and that's dead because minus three AP. This one. And then two attacks from knives on threes. Oh, wow, okay. Hey. I can't consolidate anybody because they're all in base contact. Mm -hmm. No morale check for the scouts necessary. So we'll be straight on to Death Guard turn one. Well, I'm going to leave the Plague Marines in melee with the scouts. Uh, the Poxwalkers are going to advance. I could try and charge them into the scouts, but my risk is that if I fail, then they'll be... I have to cut the scouts off and stop them into this objective, yeah, basically. I'll so be able to fall back. Higher chance of doing that with an advance. So... Two... Ooh, let's see. So a six is enough so that I can get a Poxwalker there, which means the scouts can't get within an inch of the objective, or can't touch the objective without getting an inch of the Poxwalkers. But obviously they can't do that if they fall back, so... I'll leave him there, but I've also sent some Poxwalkers around this way in case you fall back the other way, and the Sarge isn't close enough to get there, but if you fall back the other way, you might be able to do it in your next turn and mm. leave me out of position, so... Uh, no shooting, because nobody in none of my Plague Marines have pistols, so straight to the fight phase. Two attacks from Power Fists we'll start with on fours. One again, on two. That's another dead scout. Dead scout. I'll take this guy away, because my fallback plan won't work. And then two attacks with knives on threes. Ooh, that's two and a... Yeah, well, there's, there's a spare attack missed, but there was two hits. Uh, moving on fours, yep. Four plus armor saves. Oh, I've failed both. I'll just concede. Yeah, because you'll have one guy left. Yeah, two more scouts will die. So Sarge will fall back in your turn. Yeah, and you can just shoot him. You could, you might be able to throw a grenade with him or something, but then I've got my whole turn and yeah. I haven't lost any models. So game one will be a Death Guard victory. And there you can see on our map we have marked the Death Guard victory down here. Uh, this was the Rust Suns, I don't know if you can read that there. Now we'll move on to this one, which is defended by the Fly Lords. We're on to game two, rolling to see who decides which board. I've rolled a four. I've got a five. Uh, I'll pick the Mechanicus map. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll set up the terrain first this time, we won't show you the procedure, but obviously it works exactly the same as we just did before. So here is map number two, we've got the AA gun in the middle again, and then the pylons around the outside, and then there's not much terrain to go on this one, so we've got the hematrate reactor down here, uh, thermic plasma regulator, the alchemite stack, and hatch, and the other plasma regulator. And then for my two units we have the Noxus Blightbringer down here, and on the other side, some poxwalkers. And then for the space unit you've chosen the bikes. Yep. They don't have any special deployment rules, so they will have to move on to the board yep. in their first movement. So we'll be on to game two, Space Marines, turn one. Yeah, so the bikes are going to move 14 inches on. That gets them to Sarge to here. Yeah. The other guy will come next to him, and this guy will drive on, touch the objective, and then finish uh -huh. his move. Straight on to the shooting phase, I suppose. Uh, I'm not going to shoot in case I wipe out the Poxwalkers. And then in, in the charge phase, we'll declare a charge on the Poxwalkers. Can't fail, but we'll roll it. And then we'll donate. So Sarge will come around here. Touch the objective. Touch that objective. Destroy that, and Space Marines win. Yep. So game two to the Space Marines. Yep. So here's the second victory. We've marked that in there, the Silver Templar symbol. That was Strike Force Claymore, incidentally, and the first one was Strike Force Rapier. And uh, yeah, we did actually, we have just reread the rules to check that that wasn't wrong, but that is literally how that, it works. That was, that was a, a game, the fastest Warhammer 40,000 game ever. So now we move on to battery number three. It is being attacked by Strike Force Raptor and defended by, uh, defended by the Boilborn. So game three, rolling off for Choice of Matt, I've rolled two. I've rolled five, um, we'll choose the Spaceport map because we haven't seen that one yet. Uh, here we have battle number three, as before we have the anti-aircraft battery in the middle with the pylons, and then we've got then we've got big boxes with the storm bolters, there's one here, one over here, and on this side. Then there's just barrels and ammo crates and solo haulers, over there and over there, and there's actually a set of ammo crates in the Death Guard deployment zone, and not forgetting the fire extinguisher. And the toolbox. And there's an overhead picture. And for my units for this mission, we've chosen the cultists who are trying to surround this objective. 
And the foul blight spawn is over by the other side. And then for the space means you've picked the Reavers to come on. Yep. And then again, they'll have to come on on board edge. So we'll be on to game three, Space Man's turn one. So you've decided to come on right in this corner over here. Yep, because that is outside of 20 inches, which is the danger zone for the Foul Blight Spawn. Yes, and uh, you're not going to do any shoot. Well, you're not in range to shoot. So we'll actually be on to Death Guard turn one. So for my movement, the cultists have arranged themselves like this. So we've got the firing line of auto guns in front of the uh, objective, and then a couple of the melee people have come on top of the box to use the storm bolters as well. Uh, Foul Blight Spawn will advance because he can't do anything else. So he goes extra at five inches. Mm. And after much deliberation, I've decided to bring him back round the back of the bunker behind the cultists, like this. So then we'll be on to the shooting phase, and we'll obviously the cultists are going to unload into the Reavers, because the, the two Storm Bolters, um, as we said before, we treat them as being part of the box, not part of the unit, so they don't get the benefit of an extra advance, but to be honest, it's a bit of a, it's a bit of an open question whether they would benefit from it or not. And then we'll just have some auto guns as well. So that means the Storm Bolters have four shots, and they'll be hitting on all fours, because of cultists. That's two hits. Wounding all fours. Two. Three plus armor saves. Made both. And then there'll be twelve shots of auto guns, because these aren't the fire range. Six hits, perfectly average. Wounding all fives. That's three. That's not perfectly average. Three plus. Made them all. And uh, that's all my shooting, and obviously I'm not charging, so we'll be on to Space Marines turn two. So, so, here come the Reavers. Yep, yeah, we're going to move out now, six inches around the box. Uh, in the shooting phase, we will shoot our pistols at the cultists. Five shots with pistols, hitting on threes. Three hits. Wounding on threes. Two day cultists. We'll take away this melee guy and this auto gun from the end over there. Mm -hmm. and maintain our cordon around the objective. Then, in the charge phase, we'll declare a charge on the cultists. For Overwatch, the two Storm Bolters now are within rapid fire range, so that will be eight shots in total. So, we've got eight shots for Storm Bolters now on sixes. One. Moving on a four. Yep. Three plus. Yep. And then eleven shots of auto pistols. Oh, sorry, auto guns and auto pistols, not a one. And I don't get to reroll those ones because it's not the shooting phase. Actually, there's a correction from the previous turn. I should have been rerolling ones to hit thanks to the ammo box with my shooters with the cult shooting with the cultists. Check the footage, and it affects one shot with the Storm Bolter and one with the Auto Gun, so the Storm Bolter, just re-rolling that, that did hit, uh, but it didn't wound, and the Auto Gun, re-rolling the one, missed. So it's all fine. Well, Charge roll, this is important. Not a three. Didn't, mm. didn't need a three, needed a six. Yeah, that's not the mouth, unfortunately. But in the morale phase, I lost two cultists, so we need to take a morale test for them. Uh, four plus two is six, which is the champion's leadership and the Reavers aren't close enough to give them a penalty, so that's alright. So we'll be on to Death Guard, turn two. So there's my movement. The cultists have spread out like this to try and stop the Reavers getting to any objectives. We've left the guy on the Storm Bolter and near the ammo boxes. And then the Foul Blight Spawn has moved up down here uh, towards the objective. Obviously the main thing will be the Foul Blight Spawn shooting his Plague Sprayer, I think it is. So uh, if the strength is 2d6, it will be 7. And it gets d6 automatic hits. Five. There we go. Wounding on threes, we're on ones. And you're wounded, yeah. so you need to make a six. Six pluses? No. No. So the Reavers get melted, and that'll be a Death Guard victory in game number three. And they've marked the Death Guard victory in game three, so onto the final air defense battery, which is being attacked by Strike Force Sabre and defended by Legio Pox. For the final time to see who picks a mat, I've rolled a one. Mm -hmm. Try again. Three. Six. Uh, I'll pick the Mechanicus one again. And here is our fourth and final battlefield. Uh, we have the thing in the middle, uh, the pylons, and then we've got the Alchemite stack over there, thermic plasma regulator, and the hatch, hematrope reactor, thermic plasma regulator, and my remaining units are Unit 3 Blade Marines and the Biologus Putrefier. So they have gone, they've all both gone by the same uh, objective this time, so. See that makes a difference. And the Space Marines, I've got the Inceptors. And, uh, well, are you going to deploy them in the skies? Or? Uh, no, I'll move on. So you're going to move on from the war edge with them. So, finally, game four, turn one, Space Marines. So, yeah, the Inceptors are going to move on their 10 inches and immediately take one of the pylons, because we can just about make reach it. Yeah, it's 10 inches from the board edge, so you can get there. In the shooting phase, we're going to shoot at the Plague Marines. So the Inceptors have 18 shots, hitting on threes. So that'll be 13 hits, 
wounding on fours. That's seven wounds. Four plus arm saves. Uh, oh. I've made one, so I now have to make a lot of disgust and resilience. I've made three, but that's three dead, so yeah. Oh dear. They die. Well, that was fairly effective. Yeah, and then they will declare a charge on him. Yeah, he, he's not in range to overwatch, he's just outside of six, and that's yeah, his longest so range gun. Six inch charge is an eight. So, so you, yeah. you swoop in and. Yeah, we'll swoop in. Take the objective. Go into base contact with that objective. Well, I might as well play out the final fight. So, well, first thing that happens at the end of the charge phase is um, on sixes, they might do more wounds. Yeah, them. so there's three that ended their move within an inch of him, so. Yep. Yeah. Now he takes a mortal wound. Which he ignores. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> And then, and then they have seven attacks, hitting on threes, four hits, wounding on threes, uh, sorry, fives. Fives. Still two. Wounds. Arm saves, he makes both his saves. Yep. He has three attacks back, he gets one hit, it wounds on a five. Oh, we did. Three plus. Yeah. Very fine. Uh, so that in game four will be a Space Marine victory. And there's the final state of our map. These uh, Strike Force Sabre are successful. So actually ends two games each, so I suppose a draw overall really, the space means... Yeah, we've secured some of the routes out of the city, but not all of them. Anyway, that's been the games for this issue, so we'll recap all of that for you now. So that was the games from issue 64 of 440,000 Conquest. How do you think those went? Pretty much as I expected. I mean, I don't think it's they're particularly well-balanced missions, really, because I think a lot of them will come down to whether the Space Marines can make a charge. Because mm. due to the way charge rules work, you can quite easily reach two objectives at once. Yeah. And uh, the bikes are totally overpowered. They're far too fast. Yeah, because they can get to one objective in one move, and with an advance, because they can also advance six, they can get to two in yeah, a single move. You can quite easily take two in one go if the Death Guard don't cover them. Yeah, but if I do cover them, then you just char do exactly what you did and charge. And, and it doesn't even matter if they get wiped out. So the bikes literally win that in one move, as we saw. Yeah, unless the Death Guard can try and force the Space Marines to take the bikes late or something, I'm not really sure how. Well, I did give some thought to what units I was going to put yeah. with what and see if I could, for example, draw out the Inceptors early. Well, actually, the thing is, I, did, I put Plague Marines and Poxwalkers first in the hope that you might try and take them all, but you decided not to. You actually went with probably your worst unit instead. Yeah. The Scouts didn't achieve anything, but I don't think either of us were expecting them but, to. It, but again, even if I had made an 8-inch charge, I could have got ran a Scout past the Plague Marines yeah. to take the other objective and I would have won the game. The same with the Reavers as well. Mm. I mean that's probably the hardest matchup. Well they, they failed their charge in the end but even if they had made their charge they would have had to cut through all those cultists. Yeah but with their huge wave of attacks yeah. again could have charged one objective and then potentially piled into or consolidated into the other one. Yeah. Well, the funny thing was because that after the scouts game at the beginning, I realised that if I actually deployed someone on the objective right yeah, at the beginning, I you could pull it. off that. So I, I, I then, uh, thereafter, I only went to defending the yeah. central ones. And the foul blight spawn as well. If you deploy them in the centre of the board, you can basically hit any direction. You can just go wherever you want if you advance it. I mean, the Reavers were the most likely unit of mine to survive because they're the most morals and they got wiped out, so... I suppose you could have put the scouts against him and just be like, right, well, I'm just going to lose yeah. this one, so um, I'll put the unit that's going to lose anyway with... Yeah, them. I mean, in hindsight, I should probably should have taken the Reavers first. You know, if they tried, if, if you had the Reavers in place of the Scouts, they they, they would have made their charge. Well, they probably, probably would have survived. Yeah, they'd probably live longer. Then you would have been able to fall back to the objective. I mean, I guess you could try do these games again with command points. Again, I think that would, I mean, the Space Marine would probably just use one to re-roll their a failed charge, and then they would probably win. you just keep it for that, yeah, yeah, exactly. And then maybe you might use something like Death of the Traitors or Hellfire Shells. Mm -hmm. And well, I guess also you could make it so that the Space Marines have to hold position at the objective, so it's destroyed at the end of the turn but uh you'd probably need to do it over a bigger map because otherwise mm. the space marine unit would just get swamped yeah immediately yeah, i think you're probably right well i suppose also it comes down to where you'd put the terrain as well yeah i mean I, we were discussing at one point that i could have put i could have actually deployed terrain around objectives so that you i couldn't get into base contact you, you, with it you'd be in the way yeah. front, which you kind of did in the third game with that big box next to the cultists yeah that so, wasn't that actually was not deliberate yeah. like, i actually only realized i could surround it with cultists after i put that box yeah. down because i was tempted to take the inceptors but i don't think i would have been able to fit one in there with a the charge no that would but that would, again that was actually a happy accident the, the reason i mm. did put that box there was actually because i didn't want you to have a big thing i could take cover behind yeah that's why I put it there, so you couldn't use it for that. But uh, again, I don't think they're really intended to be too balanced. Uh, really, it's just about getting you used to the idea of setting up your own terrain. 
because we'd learned how to do that way back yeah, in the we haven't really, we haven't days. really had to do it since. It provides a, a neutral way of doing it, I suppose, because mm. there are some terrain pieces that are advantageous, like the ammo boxes, but if, with, because you're going back and forth, then you can generally arrange it in a certain way or the other. And generally the battle just looks better if it's the train's all spread out, so... I mean, we stuck to the terrain that actually that was printed on the board beforehand. I suppose there's nothing to stop you um, mixing and matching different terrain sets. And and actually, with the Mechanicus map, there was hardly anything on the yeah. board. So it could have been interesting to put some extra stuff on. But it did mean you got to make a very fine bunker. I got to use a Forge World Hydra turret that I bought a long time ago for some reason. Yeah, you just happened to have that lying around, but quite fortuitous in the end. Kind of disappointing that they, you have to actually cut it out rather than having it be a whole page as well. Yeah, and I mean, it cuts out the back cover, yeah. so you just have a hole in the back of the issue, which... Yeah, and I guess also you probably should feel free to use any of the other printed terrain they gave you as well. Oh, yeah, because yeah, cause of course they did. you did have the thing about setting up your own boards. I mean, there's no reason why you couldn't link to yeah, it in like a bridge. Or... or with a bridge or that crashed shuttle or that pipe that was in one of the, the previous issue. As long as both players are happy with the yeah. terrain sets, I mean, do whatever you want, really. Um, well, presumably from now on we are going to be setting up the battlefield at the start of each battle and not just using the same layout over and over again. Yeah, we'll have to see because they're starting to you know, starting to get into adult rules as it were. Yeah, it's actually started getting into like actually playing full games now. Yeah, because there are not that many rules rules to be gone over yet anymore. It's like once we learn how to build armies that's pretty much everything mm. that you need to know to graduate to full fat warmer 40,000 so... Well, anyway, I think that's all we have to say for this issue. So if you enjoyed these games, then uh, leave a like on the video and subscribe for more. Um, let us know what you thought of them. If you've played these games as well, then let us know how you got on. Uh, whatever thoughts you have about this kind of mission or anything in general, really. But until next time, we've been the Tabletop Donkeys, and we'll see you then. Bye for now. Bye.